Time now for an in-depth look at the market news this afternoon, and for that, I'm joined on the line by Dr. Yang Junsa, professor of economics at the Catholic University of Korea. Professor Yang, thanks for coming on. Good to have you back. Happy to be here. Well, overnight in Washington, Congress held a confirmation hearing for Janet Yellen, the former Fed chair, who's been picked by Joe Biden to serve as Treasury Secretary. She indicated that she would take a hard line against currency manipulation by other countries. She also emphasized a need for stimulus measures. Tell us about Yellen's hearing, Professor. Okay, well, Janet Yellen enjoys bipartisan support of Republicans and Democrats, uh, so everybody do, uh, does expect the uh, nomination to pass without a problem. Eight former Treasury secretaries of both U.S. parties set a letter of support for Janet Yellen, uh, and there's a strong support in Congress. But while the nomination will be sim uh, fairly simple, uh, the type of policies that she advocates may not be. Uh, now, you just mentioned that... Uh, Janet Yellen mentioned the need for large uh, fiscal policy, but some Republican senators are reluctant to support such policy, citing increasing government debt and uh, government deficits. Uh, but the uh, Republicans' objections sound somewhat unconvincing because these senators were not worried about increasing the deficit when President Trump lowered the, uh, lowered the taxes and increased the deficit before the coronavirus started. Now, uh, some, some other issues, uh, Janet Yellen did agree that China's illegal, unfair, and abusive practices were a problem, and she will use full array of policy tools to combat China's misbehavior, including horrendous human rights abuses. Uh, she, st uh, she stood for raising the minimum wage, and we should note that uh, Janet Yellen's original specialty was in labor economics, so she will be definitely be interested in uh, job recovery uh, while she's at the Treasury. She also cited uh, uh, the uh, uh, environment. Uh, she would appoint a senior official in charge of climate matters in, at the uh, Treasury, creating a hub to assess financial risks and study tax incentives for electric cars and other environmentally friendly policies. Well, investors seem to like what Yellen said, especially about the stimulus. Stocks on Wall Street were up. Korean stocks today were as well. What's the story in the markets? Okay, well, as you mentioned, the U.S. markets, the uh, three major indices were all up. NASDAQ did uh, very well. It went up by 1.53%. Uh, stock, uh, tech stocks were leading the recovery. Uh, now, the analysts just saying uh, what you just said, it's uh, due to the anticipation of large stimulus. I have a bit of a doubt about that because just a few days ago, the same analysts were saying that the uh, anticipation of the large stimulus was already baked into the market. Uh, but anyhow, uh, I think a more likely explanation is that, first, there's a honeymoon effect for new presidents, and uh, President Trump is withdrawing without any additional problems. They have been expecting, uh, perhaps, that some of the uh, President Trump's supporters uh, may start another violent uh, riot, uh, but that doesn't seem to be happening, so uh, things are quieter than what a lot of people were worried about. Now, European and Asian markets... Uh, FTSE, CAC, and DAX were all down slightly. Nikkei was down slightly, while Shanghai and Hong Kong, Hang Seng was up. Uh, up. Hang Seng especially by 0.90% so far. Uh, but I think they're basically waiting to see uh, what the Biden administration uh, will do. And they were paying special attention to what Janet Yellen was going to say in her nomination hearings. COSPI, uh, it was up two days in a row, uh, but it's not back to record-breaking levels. It went up today 0.71% to 3,114.55. COSAC was up today 2.08% to 977.66. And as you noted, uh, no signs of unrest in Washington, uh, which is locked down in a pretty incredible scene ahead of the inauguration of Joe Biden in just a matter of hours. So let's look at uh, what changes in U.S. policy this could uh, bring in terms of the economy and on trade. How do you see this affecting Korea? Okay, well, as far as trade is concerned, uh, it should be more consistent and predictable. Uh, President Trump, uh, even though we had a pretty good idea of what he wanted overall, uh, he tended to have these wild swings depending on his mood. Uh, President Biden will probably be more consistent, and he will stick with established international agreements and norms uh, and WTO, so it will be a uh, perhaps much more stable environment. Uh, U.S.-China trade friction will 
continue, but it's not likely to get worse unless there are problems in human rights in China or China trying to take firmer control of Hong Kong. Uh, President Trump really didn't care about human rights issues, but Biden and Democrat, uh, the Democrats will probably take more concern about that. Now, uh, as for Korea's exports to the United States, it's likely to rise because of the uh, large stimulus plan. And if the infrastructure pro program that Biden wants goes through, it may require more steel, it may require more uh, manufactured goods, which may mean an early withdrawal of Trump steel and aluminum quotas and tariffs and general increase of exports to the United States. Worry Financial uh, Research Institute estimates that uh, the, uh, after the Biden uh, administration comes into power, uh, there will be about 0.3 percent additional growth in GDP for Korea, 0.1 percent uh, from increase in exports, and 0.2 percent indirect effect uh, from reduction in uncertainty, uh, which will lead to higher investment and consumption in Korea. That'll be an interesting thing to watch as it unfolds, Professor. Thanks so much for sharing your insights with us today. We appreciate it. Thank you.